for the room. There we go. That's nice. That helped me to figure that out. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer and that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along and use the posted agenda unless I as the chair note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I as the chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude the remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called further. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please call until, uh, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public who, that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their name and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will conducted by, be conducted by roll call vote. Uh, members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in this discussion. Town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name or acts inappropriately. Once again, for our home audience, that number is 508-228-6479. Call today. Warranty void. <laughs> Sorry, I do want to run through that thing as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, so you have an agenda in front of you at this point, um, and I would love a motion to approve that, please. So moved. And do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Roll call. Um, Jacques Zemecki. Here. Uh, just say uh, aye. Uh, aye, aye, sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. It's okay. We'll keep pace here. Joe Plandowski. Aye. Mary Lepre. Aye. Melissa Murphy. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Um, draft minutes and stuff are still being recorded on Zoom. So that is a beautiful thing. We love that. Um, item five, which is public comment. John and Nicole, I see you both on here. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to do or say at this point, we'd love to hear from you, if so. Uh, hi, Barry, it's Nicole, and I just uh, have some time, and I thought I'd stop in and, and say hello and just see how everyone's doing and just listen. Great, that's awesome. Lovely to have you on board as always. Thank you. <clears throat> John, did you have something? Um, just, uh, just good afternoon. Hello to everybody. Just uh, listening in. Great, no, glad you could be here. I really do appreciate it. Um, all right, so that's gonna bring us to election of officers. I don't know if you guys just, I, I might suggest just tabling this because um, that'll be another item on our agenda um, by next month. Um, we're gonna have to see how this committee has reformulated itself. Um, uh, basically, I think you're all aware, and I'm going to just skip ahead here at this point to item nine. It's the application of select board for committee appointments. Um, mind you, that deadline <coughs> is tomorrow, May 20th at 12 noon. So unless you were appointed by your respective, uh, by a respective committee, like Melissa being on the select board, Mary being on the uh, board of health, who will do the reappointments at some stage. And I'm gonna assume it's hopefully between now and our next meeting in June. Um, the rest of us have to reapply at this point. So um, you've probably already gotten an email from me. Um, just as a reminder at this point, um, it's committee interest form for incumbents. 
please do fill that out. And uh, if you want to still be on the committee, and I, I would love to have you all still on board, you're a great group to work with. Um, please make sure that's in the um, hands of the, um, I think it's going to be Erica who's dealing with it. It is. Melissa's yeah. nodding her head. Yep. And make, Barry, <laughs> last night I was um, reappointed as a select board rep. So that is confirmed. Beautiful. Excellent. So, Mary, you may also want to reach out to, um, is it Roberto who's doing your board at the moment? I, I sent that email to Roberto to put it on the Perfect. agenda. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, all right. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, I'm happy to help you. But the deadline is ticking for 12 noon tomorrow. And uh, that I don't know if there's going to be any other applicants as well, too. We'll know by the close, you know, a few hours after 12 noon tomorrow to see who else has applied since it, it's, it's open for anyone to be able to apply. And uh, if you do reapply, just be aware as well, too, there's going to come a stage where you will probably have to peer on Zoom or in person before the select board to um, just be interviewed and uh, have a chat with them if need be. All right. So sorry to skip around a little bit, but I, I thought that was rather appropriate um, just to kind of bring that up. Um, item seven, on, just going back to where we were, item seven on the agenda is the Nantucket host agreement. Um, I have one that was given to us from town council as a sample. Um, Dorothy was good enough, Dorothy Hertz was good enough to send me the other two um, from both um, Green Lady and Act Natural. So I'll get those out to you very shortly. And um, what I'd like you to all do is go back through these using maybe the town council template and just begin to think about is what we have on board good? Do we need to stay with it? Um, do we need to make changes to it? And if so, what changes are we gonna make? So this may be a one or two meeting discussion. We're gonna to have to see how that flows out, um, but do be aware that it is gonna be sent out to you. I wanted to at least get close to where we're gonna to be to start doing this. You have any questions or comments? We're doing good so far. Okay. Um, so the cannabis going to item eight on the agenda. The Cannabis Control Commission um, was looking to see if there's, they had an open public comment period um, on guidance on the control and ownership document. And at, um, I think it was our last meeting, I'm so sorry, where um, we had decided that we probably would comment. Joe Plandowski was really nice enough to draft out um, a comment back to them. It was perfect, short and sweet, but to the point. So I don't know if you have any questions on that or Joe, do you want to talk anything about it? Well, if someone did not read it or forgot what was in it, it's very simple. And it says, there can't be a conflict of interest. For example, if I owned a marijuana establishment and I also owned a testing <sighs> laboratory, I should not be allowed to send my product to that laboratory to be tested. Just simply a conflict of interest. And that was the whole point of what I wrote up. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on this? Or are you all good? I'm not seeing anyone raising their hand or chiming in. So Joe, thank you very much for doing that. That's no. awesome. Thank you. Um, this was an endeavor to fly through this thing as much as possible. Your, your time is very valuable here, but I don't know if any of you have anything that you'd like to comment on. Um, that's coming up or anything you're aware of in, in terms of the industry that's going on out there. But I, I really, you know, always like to kind of check back in with you all just to see if there's anything that you're aware of happening out there at this point. Melissa? Um, hi, Barry. <clears throat> um, 
Have we heard um, any update um, from Act Natural about the progress of the testing and reopening? Okay. No, so seeing not, you shake your head. Yeah, no, unfortunately, not a thing at this point. Um, okay. You know what? Okay. I, let me let me just do one thing here for one sec. Um, I just want to share that I have heard some public concern that. And obviously, you know, this is not personal, but that, you know, Act Natural was issued um, a license and they've not been able to operate. And that's, so I'm wondering, you know, can they just hold that license forever? Is there a time frame in which they need to resolve these issues? Um, like, how, how does that work in this industry? And I'm not clear on that. I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, as, as far as I know from everything I've been able to read so far, there really is no time limit on it. Um, because it, it seems as though that the state kind of will allow you to get your act together, no matter how long it seems to take. I think if there were a competitive market for it, mm -hmm. in other words, someone else wants to open a, a marijuana facility, a uh, cannabis facility out here at this point. Yeah. Well, that, clearly that, the investment to do that is, you know, long-term and there were other people who were interested in the license and it was awarded to Act Natural. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a tricky situation. I, I understand because we, you know, there's significant investment that goes into operating mm -hmm. um, and starting a marijuana establishment. I'm just, I think it would be prudent for us to understand, um, you know, because we don't know if other people would be interested in the, um, in seeking a second license because Act Natural holds it. Um, so I think if there's, I, and I, I just think it would be um, good for us and or the select board to have some kind of update um, as to, you know, what's happening with the progress and what they perceive their timeline um, for reopening to be. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. As a matter of fact, I just jotted that down as a, as a target item for next month, uh, to try to get, um, um, a representative from Act natural on board to be able to talk to us officially. Yeah, that would be great. You know, and that way you can communicate back up to the board. Um, Jacques, did you have your hand raised? I'm sorry. Uh, you're muted there, sir. Um, I, I'm just kind of curious as to, uh, I mean, I would say I would agree that in a perfect world, ownership interests would be separated between uh, marijuana establishments and independent testing labs. I, okay. I just don't know how you accomplish that on Nantucket unless you have somebody that wants to make the investment yeah. to start their own testing mm -hmm. lab when there's limited opportunities to recoup that investment because there's only two customers. Totally. Potentially three that you're going to have. <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm, and the Cannabis Commission is also allowed for exemptions on the island due to the the three mile federal prohibition due to the schedule one classification of cannabis. Um, I, I, I personally kind of feel like sending something to the CCC is a bit of a mixed message, uh, but that's just my opinion. I, Go ahead, Joe. Whatever, John. What's happening on the islands, both <laughs> islands, is completely, the, the right word for it is stupid. I mean, I come from the hospital and commercial lab background. You would never do what in the world is allowed on these two islands. And why someone hasn't sat down and said, wait a minute, these are islands. We need to get the product to laboratories other than have self-testing done. We need to go through the, the border the materials are just going to go to a testing lab and be destroyed after they're tested. Nobody's shipping it over to resell it. Right. And why that simple concept has not been adopted is beyond me. What's happening on the, this island is really dumb in terms of testing. 
That's like you're wasting your time. Uh, I, I guess if, if Mr. Chair, if I could comment. Please, um, go ahead, go ahead. I, I feel it would be better for the commission then to, to, to make some sort of request or find some sort of way to get this to other uh, independent testing labs on, on the, you know, on the mainland. Um, I agree. As a, as a, as opposed to, I guess, kind of de facto uh, outlawing it on, on, on the islands. If, if we were to truly have to separate ownership. Just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will tell you the letter at this point was not specific in the way it was worded was not specific to Nantucket itself or the vineyard for that matter or Gosnold for that matter. Um, it was really kind of what I thought was a more genetic uh, generic letter to, to address that issue throughout the entire state. Um, so I will tell you just going back through this and since it's a public document, I'll be happy to share it with you, John, if you'd like. Um, it was, it was left, I, at least when I read this, it was a little bit more open-ended than just restricting it with, within these within the territories I just mentioned at this point. Um, you know, and, and I, I mean, I agree with Joe, but I also understand too, that we're dealing with the federal government in this case, and all of a sudden all the game rules change underneath it since it's considered still, as you said, a control uh, schedule one type controlled substance. So um, until that changes and until the feds make that change and mm -hmm. hopefully that'll happen in the not too far future, there we have it. But um, yeah. I, I do have another comment. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. If I can make it. Sure. Following up on what Melissa said about whether the one that's closed will open, and it doesn't relate to them specifically, it relates to the industry in general. The first quarter financial reports have been released on now 11. I just saw the 11th one this morning, and it's really interesting. All 10 of them have lost money in the first quarter. And to put it in perspective how much they lost, for every dollar of a marijuana product that was sold, it cost $1.50 to make that dollar transaction. Uh, I added it up for the, the 10 that I, I've been following for the past couple of weeks. And in terms of size, these are huge operations. The smallest one is around $50 million a year in sales. And the largest is just under $500 million in sales. And for the first quarter, the revenues were uh, roughly $400,000. Pardon me, $400 million, $400 million. And the, these combined 10 lost $200 million, lost. And when you look at another piece of information in Connecticut, which is just starting with uh, marijuana establishments, they, have 12, they had 12 licenses available and they got over 15,000 applicants. And I look at that and say, wow, that must be a really profitable business. I ought to be in that business. And then I look at the financial reports for these companies. None of them are making any money. Even the one that reported this morning, they lost money. So 11 out of 11 lost money in the first quarter, significant amounts of money. I don't understand it. I'm missing something here. Thanks. Anyone else have anything they'd like to contribute at this point? Yeah, Jacques, go ahead. Sorry, I was having problems with the mute button there. No problem. Uh, yeah, getting back to uh, back when I was having problems with the mute button, uh, the, it is true that we have the two licenses and I don't believe that, I believe probably that Act Natural is uh, 
you know, been trying to do everything to reopen. But the problem is that the state, the state is just taking their time. Uh, they were supposedly taking their time at one point because they hadn't quite set up the uh, <laughs> laboratory procedures for the tests they were asking. They were still working through that. So they thought they might delay for a few months. But I'm sure that Act Natural would be open if they, if they could. Yeah, I agree, Joe. I, you know, and um, like I was saying, uh, um, what I tried to imply is that I don't want to imply that there is any pressure on them or that they're doing something wrong by not opening. I understand the situation. I just don't understand um, terms for the license and at some rules and conditions in the license. And I think that's something that I, I'd like to become more familiar with and, and likely we should as a board just understand um, what those responsibilities are. Um, and you know, Barry, I, I think Mike was here a few months ago. It might he be was. nice if yeah. Yeah, yeah we reach out to him and just ask him if he could pop in periodically and just give us an update. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but people in the community, when they see that I'm on the cannabis advisory committee, think I I know something that I don't know. <laughs> um, and I would love to be able to you know help support them by giving clear answers. Now that that's a very reasonable thing to deal with. We haven't heard from him in a while, and I'm usually one who's going to kind of just throttle back a little bit and let the process flow under its own accord. But um, you know, I, I hear you. If if people in the community are asking uh, about it, um, you know, let's give them the right answer and the responsible answer with this. So, like I said, I'll reach out to him and have him back. You know, try to get him back on board for our next meeting in June. And uh, if you don't mind, I might have him, re have him reach out to you personally as well, which I think would be a good thing. Um, yeah, that would be great. I would love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not even I, sure I actually have contact information for him. Um, so feel free to share my email with him. And um, thank you. There. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm, I'm also a big fan of putting out fires before they get too hot as well. So that's why I think reaching out to you personally would be good. Um, just so you're a little bit more aware. Okay, is there anything else you'd all like to chat? Yeah, Jacques? Yeah, uh, just a comment about the cost of uh, running the stores, et cetera. It's, it's a problem in the industry as people, if you've been reading through things, uh, a lot of people cannot produce product that actually uh, will uh, be cheaper than black market product. Uh, and a lot of this is through the incredible regulations, the in the hoops you got to run through, uh, testing you have to do. Uh, but also it has to do with taxes, how it's taxed. You know, if they could charge the money that half the money that uh, they pay in taxes now could go back to the people, maybe they could make some money. And it's, it's got some, in California where I have a bunch of friends that have been doing this for a couple of generations and decide to go legit. You know, a lot of people are starting to think about dropping out of the legal legit market again, because it's just, you can't make money. Uh, and I, th I think probably the watershed moment will be when, I believe you could probably start making money if, uh, it was allowed in the United States if the federal law uh, changed to allow marijuana. So if you go across borders, that would maybe leave a little of the monetary uh, stigma because you could really bounce out supply. But right now there's amazing amounts of supply in California and a lot of people are just throwing away or burning it because they can't do anything with it. They can't sell it because it costs too much. Yeah, I did run across a report recently on California where the price of the of marijuana has dropped dramatically from somewhere around $400 down to $125 on a relative basis. And those people are not going to be able to make any money. They will not be able to compete against the illegal drug manufacturers. 
And that's going to present an interesting issue down the road. And you yeah. can see it from the, these 10 companies I mentioned that lost money, huge corporations losing that much money. How are they going to survive? Not very long. Yep. Anything else you would like to discuss? All right. Well, seeing that there's nothing else hanging out there at this point, um, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. Oh, let me do one thing at this point. Joe, thank you very much. You've, you've been a wonderful, uh, what's the word I'm looking for at this point? Uh, you're a wonderful source of information that, uh, you know, in terms of what's been going on out there. And I really appreciate, you know, what you've been sharing with us. Um, so, and that's true for the rest of you as well, too. If you're coming across things that you'd like to have, think are important and you want to have it shared out to the rest of the rest of our board here, um, please just bounce it to me. I'll take a look at it and, um, you know, make sure that I can send it back out to you at this point. So thanks again, Joe. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, so our next meeting is scheduled for June 16th at one o'clock p.m. Um, and we'll see where the, the tides and the tables take us to from there. So if there's nothing else, I'd love a motion. Oh, Melissa, please. Yeah. Uh, just before I make the motion to adjourn, because that's yes, my favorite motion to make, um, I will <laughs> not be here at the meeting on the 16th. Okay. Okay, thank right, you. No, and I'm, I will make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, and do I hear a second to that? Second. Second. Okay. So roll call, Jacques. I need you to unmute yourself, sir. Okay. There you yeah, go. sorry. Still have a problem with the mute button. Uh, four. I. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And Joe? Yes. Melissa? I. Mary? Yes. Chair votes affirmative as well, too. Thank you all so much for your time. I know it's precious. Thanks. Thanks. Take care, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.